Hey friends, welcome back to my kitchen. Today we have another freezer meal prep. Today's prep is gonna be a little bit different in the fact that I have some seasonal freezer prep that we're doing today. And I have some water started back here. I actually have some pepper relish, sweet pepper relish cooking here. I wasn't really planning to include that in this video, but I may show you the tail end of putting it in jars and canning it today. We also have some other prepping that we're gonna do that's some breakfasty stuff. It's a little bit of a mismatch this week, but we have some corn that our neighbors actually grew for us. We got about 260 ear out of that, and that's what I'm starting this water out for. We are going to freeze it. I know a lot of times I use a Amish method of canning corn. If you're interested in that, I will leave the link for that below, and I showed that step-by-step -step last year of how I did that. But this year, um, I'm just wanting to get what I have currently from our neighbors put away really quickly. And my mom actually borrowed my big canner that sits outside, so I don't even have that right now. So I decided to go ahead and just include it in what's going into the freezer for this month. And we've got some other little knickknacks here and there. So I'm gonna pull out stuff to actually make granola as well. The girls are, my daughters are outside husking corn. So we're going to start getting batches through the water and cooking it. We're going to cook it for about 15 minutes and then we'll cool it down. I'll show you step by step how we freeze it in case you're interested in freezing your own corn this year. And I'm going to start the oven off as well. I think my recipe, I need to double check it, but I think that it is made at about 200 or 250, my granola recipe. And granola stores really well in the freezer too. So let's pull out ingredients for the granola. I'm gonna take you along with me. I'm getting a really late start on this prep today. I was hoping to get started earlier. So this may go into this evening. I don't know, but hang with me and I'm sure that we're gonna get a lot done together today. This week's sponsor is First Sight Wine Company from Paso Robos AVA in California. They offer organic, sustainably packaged wines without snobbery or high price tag, ensuring quality without compromise. And I wanted to give you a wonderful pairing with these wines. My personal favorite is the Sauvignon Blanc. It is classically California. It's wonderful aromas of pear, lemon zest and fresh cut grass led into a flavorful bouquet of ripe grapefruit, honeysuckle and tropical fruit. It is so refreshing and pairs so well with great healthy light dishes. I've also enjoyed the Cabernet Sauvignon and I really appreciate the sustainable packaging that First Sight offers. Beyond their sustainable packaging, they also are organic at a very affordable price. For me personally, having a high quality organic wine sent right to my door is so convenient. If you enjoy a great glass of wine with your dinner, check out First Sight in the description box below. If you use my link, you will get 25% off of your first purchase. Okay, I've got some of my ingredients out here. I don't know if they're gonna fit in this. <laughs> this is my mixer mixing bowl, but we're gonna give it a try. I'm gonna double up this recipe. Now this recipe is one I shared a few months ago with you all and just really raved about how much we enjoy this. I think I've got some moisture on the bottom of my measuring cup. Um, so that's two and it is a honey granola. So good. If I have granola around, we use it. It's just a great alternative to cereal and it's still a quick breakfast. So I'm gonna stop talking and start counting so I don't lose count. Twelve, okay. All right, and I don't have nuts. That's one thing that I usually put in this. So as a replacement for the nuts, I'm going to actually use all shredded coconut. This is supposed to have a combination of nuts and shredded coconut with the oats. So we're gonna use these up, which is great because they've needed to get used up anyways. And they're going to make a very, it's gonna be a very soft granola, which is delicious. And I was wrong, I double checked my recipe 
um, for the temperature on this, it is 350. So I thought it was lower. I know there's been some I've done before with a lower temp. I will leave this recipe below um, as usual, but I am doubling it. So it is a nice amount and it does get some raw cane sugar in it, even though we have a good amount of honey going in as well. Okay, we have a cup of avocado oil. You could use canola oil. I just don't cook with that. So this is a good neutral tasting oil. We have a stick of butter. Again, this is all for a double batch. So keep that in mind. Um, but you're not gonna put a full stick into a single version of this recipe. Now we're gonna do about a teaspoon of vanilla. It's the last of my Azure vanilla. Guess that means I need another order. And then we are going to do um, two teaspoons of cinnamon or so. I'm saying or so because if you're somebody that likes a lot of cinnamon, you might wanna put a little extra. And we enjoy a lot of cinnamon in our house. Okay, now you're gonna want a teaspoon and a half um, of salt per recipe. So we need about three teaspoons of salt in this one. And now we are gonna do about a cup of honey. You could put a little more, a little less, depending on what your family enjoys. And that honey, oh, smells so good. And I like to do my oil um, in this before I do the honey because then it helps the honey easily come out of the measuring cup since there was oil in it beforehand. So I just put a little bit more than a cup. We like ours nice and sweet. And now we're just gonna stir everything together. You really wanna make sure that salt especially is very spread out in the whole thing. You don't want a nice big salty clump somewhere. And of course we want everything else spread out through this, the oils and fats so that everything gets toasted very evenly. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and divide this between two cookie sheets. This usually doesn't stick very badly just because of the um, oils that are in this, but because there's honey in it, not exactly sure. I'm gonna put some parchment paper, parchment paper, <laughs> parchment paper on the sheets just because I don't want it to caramelize to the pan and it really be a pain to clean later. I love getting this big roll off of Amazon. It literally lasts forever. Um, if I remember, I will put the link in the description box below. It is just really nice stuff. Does such a good job at helping things not stick too badly. <laughs> okay, all right. So we're gonna just divide this between the two pans. It already tastes good. I already was tasting it. <laughs> tastes really great. So I'm just going to sprinkle it out. And honestly, I didn't uh, film this part, but I did put my hands in this and mix it by hand just because um, you can more evenly distribute the honey in it by doing that. And I forgot that's how I did it the last time too, just to help the honey not clump up in one big area. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna spread this out and this bakes for about 25 minutes at 350. So super quick. It's not one of those that you have to bake for hours on end, which is really, really convenient. And oh, it already smells so good. Raw honey is just, it's so delicious. <laughs> it's like pure gold in my opinion. And this side definitely has more on it than that one. So I'm gonna just transfer a couple handfuls here help even it out. And we're just gonna go ahead and pop these in the oven. And I think our water is boiling back here, so we're ready to add some cobs into the hot water. All right, I'm gonna check on my pepper relish here. You really gotta cook it because there's sugar in it and you want the sugar to ultimately sort of thicken up, which is what's happening here. So this is getting close to being done. Like I said, I'm sorry I didn't film the beginning of that, but I will leave the recipe below. Our water over here is ready to roll, and the girls brought me a good first batch of corn. This is very, very young corn. We picked it that way purposely 
because it just is so sweet and tender. And I'm just gonna fill this until basically I can't um, fit any more in here. Now I'm gonna set my timer for 15 minutes. Since I have a few minutes while I'm waiting on my corn, I'm gonna get started in on my next project. So right now, the bell peppers, I'm sorry if it gets really bright, my skylights like to shoot right in here at this time of day. Um, but my bell peppers are in season right now, and so that's why I'm doing my sweet pepper relish. And I'm also going to slice some bell peppers up and vacuum seal them for in the freezer, we use them in fajitas, in stir fries, any time, any place. <laughs> we have lots of ways to use them. And so I'm going to be cutting them up sort of one color at a time, or not one color at a time. We're going to be cutting all the colors at the same time is what I'm trying to say. So I'm going to mix the colors so that we have nice mixture of bell peppers in each baggie and I'm just going to slice them. I could use my food processor to do this, but my food processor is just a little bit too brutal on these peppers, and I want them to be nice slices, nice shaped, especially for like fajitas. I don't want them to get bruised or smashed, and I'm a little concerned that my food processor may do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and slice these in between doing some corn and cooking the corn anyways and letting it cool. So that's one thing we're gonna do. We're going to take the corn, we're gonna get it out of the hot water and we're going to spray cold water on it right away to stop the cooking process. So we're sort of blanching it, um, but it's almost cooked in my opinion when you do this. So really all you have to do is pull the corn out of the freezer and you're gonna be able to warm it up and throw some butter in it and have just like fresh sweet corn in the middle of winter, which is what we love. We love, love corn. And last year I did 600 ear. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do that many this year. Um, we'll have to wait and see, but this is at least the first batch that our kind neighbors grew for us. Okay, we've got a pretty good rhythm going on. I'm going to explain what I'm doing here and tell you what tools I'm using. So we like to cream our corn or we will do a mixture of cut off and creamed. Right now at the rate we're going, I think I'm gonna be able to cream most of it. And some people think that creamed corn is a recipe. There is ways to add cream to corn in recipes, but that is not what I'm doing here. This is a corn creamer. It's a little hard to see because it's got a lot of corn all over it, but there is a blade right here and there are teeth right here. And basically what it does is it really just takes all of the starch and the sugars and all of the juices off the cob and sort of um, smashes them just a little bit. 
Here's a bag that is finished. I think you can kind of see, you can't really see the individual kernels very well. And that's what cream corn looks like. It's not the big kernels. So we're putting them into quart size bags like this. I'm filling up my measure before I put them into a freezer bag. And we have stuff cooking over here, cooling over here, and I'm cutting here. And basically the way you do this, and the girls cannot do this, an adult really needs to do this. There's really um, a high chance of cutting yourself if you do not do this correctly. So you just take the cob, and in this instance, it's cooked. We do cream raw cobs if we're going to can the corn. Um, and again, if you go and check out that video, you will see how I do that. But since we're freezing it, we want it cooked so that um, it freezes well and doesn't get freezer burnt. So we're filling up this guy, but I have a cookie container, a Tupperware container that is just a perfect size to do this with. So I just stick this in here and I'm going to take the cob and I'm going to sort of run it along that blade and it just does the job of cutting it off. And I like to hang on to everything as I go. You could put this into a bowl too. I will leave it linked below. There are wooden creamers as well. Um, I'm sure there's plastic too, but I like to buy things that I know are gonna last me a very long time, maybe not quite a lifetime, but many, many years. And so both, I have two creamers. Um, that way if my mom or one of my sister-in-laws is doing corn with me, we can both be creaming at the same time. As I was explaining that, my camera ran out of memory. So I'm just gonna tell you what I said and it didn't record. Um, but I have my bell peppers cut up over here because of the kind of rhythm we're in today. I am kind of waiting on corn in between. I might have five or 10 minutes in between batches of corn. So I'm going to vacuum seal these and I have a few other small projects. I'm thinking I'm gonna weave in between what I am doing. So I'm really excited and I think I, was explaining about the creamer and the difference with the creamed corn is just the fact that it's pretty much like a crushed corn kernel versus a whole corn kernel which is what we enjoy eating a whole lot so i have a bucket down here that i'm dropping cobs into that i'm going to take out to the wheelbarrow that the girls are husking in and we'll just take that out and dump it and i'm waiting for my water to get heated up again here and i have more corn to put on. We also need to put the pepper relish into jars too. I've got a lot going on at once um, and I'm waiting. I just pulled a batch of corn out so I'm gonna keep on rolling with the creamer. When your kitchen is to this level of mess, you know stuff is getting done. <laughs> so I have my vacuum sealer um, out here, went down into the cellar and got that out. And I really like to, when I'm gonna package something small, I like to take this size of a vacuum seal bag that's already created. If you don't know anything about it, um, generally they come in rolls, a lot of bags come in rolls, you cut the size you want, you seal them. Well, these are sealed on one side. So this is an eight inch by 12 inch bag. And all I'm gonna do is take them, maybe even a few at a time, and I'm gonna take scissors, and I'm gonna cut them in half. So we're gonna get two bags out of one bag. The one will be sealed on one side, the other side, or the other bag's gonna need to be sealed on two sides. So like this one here is sealed across the bottom. We'll put the peppers in, it needs to be sealed on this side. This one here is gonna have to be sealed on both sides. Um, to create a baggie. My timer is getting ready to go off, so we're gonna transfer more corn. So I'm gonna work on sealing bags, making a nice big stack of bags, while I am going to transfer this um, corn over here in just a second. 
So my machine, I'm able to just seal instead of vacuuming and sealing to create a seal across the bottom. We're gonna have lots of little packages. I like to do about a handful at a time. I don't think I really use more than that. And if I do, if I really need to, I can grab a couple packs out, but generally just a handful at a time. And that's enough for a soup. That's enough for um, baked omelets or making regular omelets. That's enough for fajitas to mix with some onions and you can package things to the size that works for your family. That's why I love to do food prep in the freezer and canning because I can make portion sizes that work great for us. Something very nice about peppers, uh, whether it's hot peppers or bell peppers or even onions, I know they're not a pepper, but onions are the same way, is you don't have to blanch them or cook them before you freeze them. And I find if I vacuum seal them, I can make these last a very, very long time. So I really love to do this whenever they're in season because for example, these green bell peppers, I don't remember the exact price of the yellow and the red, but the green bell peppers are three for a dollar at a local market. And that's such an excellent price. Bell peppers can be pricey when they're not in season. And so knowing <laughs> there's the sound it makes, um, knowing that I can stock up while it is in season for a really cheap price and we're able to use these in recipes throughout the year is such a great feeling. And I actually just ran out of a whole bunch of them I had done last year. So the timing is just perfect and we'll be able to use them to make lots of flavorful things. So that's about how long it takes to vacuum seal it. And there we go. And there are these nice little packages and I can write the date on them if I want to, um, just right on the outside of the packaging. But I just try to make sure that I have a nice mixture of the types. But if you only like one kind of bell pepper, you know, you could just do green or you could just do red um, if you don't like all the colors. And they just work out great in stir fries. Ugh, then they're at least a little bit crunchy. I do can onions and peppers as well, but this at least helps with the crunch if you want more of a fresher taste. All right, we're making some progress on our packs of peppers. I have another batch of corn here, and I did wanna mention that I am about every batch pretty well when I'm done with the batch. I am bagging the corn right away and I'm putting it into the freezer right away. Um, it's not really something you want to let sit around as you do it. And how oh, the memories I have with canning, I mean, with freezing corn with my parents and grandparents through the years. I have so many memories. We used to, at my grandparents, all get together and do corn and we'd have a big, wagon load of it and we would be doing it outside. Some would be husking. Usually that was our job if we were pretty young, um, like my daughters are doing right now, is husking the corn and helping to silk it or sending it through a silker. If you've never seen a silker, they're very handy. I don't have one today for what I'm doing, but um, it's like a little machine that has brushes on the inside that you can send your corn cobs through. So lots of great memories of doing corn and Whenever you have a Sunday lunch in the winter time, so nice to pull out corn. And my husband is a huge fan of sweet corn like this. Um, and so that's why I do a lot of it. And we actually are down to quite literally like, I think three jars of corn out of the 600 ear that I did last year. So goes to show how much we really do eat it in our household. I actually personally don't eat a lot of it. I'll eat corn off the cob in the summertime, but because I eat a fairly low sugar diet on, the reg on a regular basis, um, I do not eat a lot of corn. I love it, I would eat it, but I just simply, my health can't handle having too much of it. So my f girls and my husband really enjoy it, so I do it for them for sure.
taking a little break from the corn. I've been having lots of batches coming through. I took all of the bell peppers downstairs and they're in the freezer. All the corn that's been done so far is in the freezer. And I did put these out on our screen and porch to cool down. And now they are totally cool. And I've noticed with this recipe that they get kind of like this, where it's like very stuck together, which is exactly why I love making this recipe. Honestly, I think it's the best um, granola recipe just because you get really big chunks of granola in it. And for me, that's the texture I love, it's the texture my family really enjoys. Also, my husband is home from work and you can see back here this big basket of corn that he helped the girls knock out. So we've got more to go, but we've accomplished a lot already as well. So some of this will go in on my pantry and then some of it will go in the freezer. And a lot of times when we eat this, we eat it with like frozen blueberries that have been picked from the year or strawberries. Um, even raisins, the girls love to add all kinds of things into this. I feel like I should probably be using a spatula <laughs> to help collect this, but sometimes hands work well too. So just for example, to show you why I put this down, you can't probably can't see super well, but this little strip right here was off of the paper. And this one actually right here, you can see was off of the paper and they are very stuck to the pan. So I'm glad that I put um, the, the stuff I did in on the bottom of the pan. It's getting later, but we are still chugging away. So I got three bags of granola um, out of that. So I'm very happy with that. I'm gonna put that in the freezer, one of my runs down um, with the corn. And I have another batch in, another batch cooling. So we're ready to do another big pile when I'm finished with this little task. So. This is the um, pepper relish. I always wanna say pepper jelly, but that's not the right, the right thing. Um, this is the pepper relish. And this, the best way to describe this is it's very, very sweet. It's a very sweet type of a topping that we use on things like burgers. Um, I also use it in some like meat mixtures that we'll use on top of baked potatoes. Um, there's just a lot you can do with this. You can put it on top of cream cheese on crackers. Sometimes we just simply get crackers out and eat it with crackers <laughs> as almost like a dip or something, but it is so good. And it's one of those things that even if I'm doing a year like this year, in case you guys did not know or you're new to my channel, I'm doing a very light preservation year. Um, last year was a huge year for me when it came to food preservation. And this year I'm just doing a lighter year. We just didn't need as much stuff. And to be honest with you, we have had a lot going on in life and I just haven't had as much time to can things and freeze things. So all I'm going to do with this is put it into these jars. I'm gonna put the lids and rings on. I'm gonna grab my water bath canner and water bath these for about 10 minutes. Since they have a lot of sugar and they have um, vinegar in them, it's you treat it like a pickle. So you wouldn't can them very long. And yeah, so that's pretty much what I needed to tie up with this project. And then I think I'm gonna to try to do one more yet in between doing corn. I'm still kind of having some spacing of about 10 to 15 minutes between big waves of corn. So I'm just trying to expand my productivity by getting as much done at once as I can. is pulled out of the canner. We've got lids popping behind me, which is always a happy sound if you're someone 
that likes to can. <laughs> and I finally invested in something that I had at one time in my kitchen and decluttered it a couple of years ago. Didn't really have a big use for it. And whenever I have been cutting up onions to freeze, you all have been on me about picking one of these things up again. And it's just one of these choppers that's kind of like it dices the things for you. Has this little grid on the inside. It comes with a couple different sizes. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually just chopping up onions. I love having these and garlic in, you can hear the lids popping behind me, um, in my freezer. It just makes cooking so much simpler. You don't have to chop up an onion every single time you start a recipe, which I feel like it's in most recipes to chop up an onion or to add in garlic. So being able to pull that right out of the freezer and throw it frozen into the frying pan is so convenient. So we are just going to, so you just, if you haven't seen one of these before, you just put the onion right on there and I'm just cutting them in half to make it just a little bit easier. And well, <laughs> of course this demonstration is not working well. There we go. Um, the top layer, it, that's a little bit tougher you can't have on there. I was realizing that earlier too um, because it doesn't go through. So I got to peel that top layer off and now it'll go through perfectly. Um, so all I'm going to do is keep chopping these up and there's, it's saving my eyes to do it this way for sure. And then I'm going to vacuum pack it into small bags just like I did the peppers and kind of like around the size I normally would have for cooking a recipe. So that's, I'm going to finish up everything I have here and I am so excited to have these in my freezer. I haven't had them for a while and so I've been just cutting up onions as I cook and I'm ready to be able to just grab it right out of the freezer, throw it in. So it was 10.30 p.m. until I finished the corn. I truthfully did not get a last clip, but I wanna thank you guys for watching today. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment below. I hope this video gave you tons of inspiration. I love chatting with you in the comments, so definitely let me know what projects you are up to for your monthly freezer prep, and I'll see you in my next video.